In the previous lesson, we looked at how certain plants can actually poison animals. In this case, we're going to focus on how certain types of salts can actually cause poisoning in animals. So the, the first type of or, or to know is when does salt, salt, salt poisoning actually occur? So basically, in a nutshell, it happens when the animal doesn't have enough water to drink. Even humans can be poisoned by plain salt if we never drink water to flush it out of our systems or to dilute the salt in our bodies. So basically, the first bullet there, excessive amounts of salt are taken in. That's the first step. The intake of the good quality water is then basically limited. So they don't have water, or if they do have water, the water also maybe could be salty, or there could be dirt in it or something just to make it a bad quality. So there's not enough pure water to actually help dilute the salt. So then the third bullet there, limited water intake can be due to basically overcrowding. If there's too many animals, all of them crowd around the water trough and there's one, one poor individual can't get enough water, by the time he gets there, there's nothing to drink. Then also unpalatable medicated water. So if for some reason the animal was sick because of another reason, maybe they have had a disease and now the medication was put into the water and in the meanwhile, there is a salt lick close by and the animal's licking the salt uh, lick, but he's not drinking his water because the medication tastes bad. So again, then he's not getting enough water in. If the water is frozen, makes sense, he can't drink it, it's solid. And also if there's new surroundings. So if the animal has been moved from, from one farm to the next, he isn't familiar with the pastures and the lay of the land and he doesn't know where to get water, he could maybe, in any stall is licking a salt lick, he can get um poisoned by the salt, he's not drinking enough water. Some symptoms of your salt poisoning. Basically, the mucous membranes become red and dry, so they become inflamed. There would be excessive salivation, increased urination and defecation because he's trying to get rid of all the salt from his body. He will have, obviously, increased thirst, so he will be looking for water the whole time. He could be vomiting in severe, occasion, uh, severe cases. He'd be constipated. And you'll also have uh, stomach pains and diarrhea. And in severe cases, you can become blind. The animals could have seizures and they could actually be partially par paralyzed. So meaning they would struggle to move around. So your treatment here, basically it's a quick fix, provide fresh drinking water. Yeah, always make sure that animals have enough water before they are given additional supplements like a salt lick. Then give water with a stomach tube in severe cases. So in some instances, uh, when the Animals are so thirsty, they struggle to actually uh, swallow. So then even if they do are, are provided with fresh water, they won't be able to drink it. So then, or if in case, let's say the animal has gone blind or is now experiencing seizures, it will not be in any capacity to actually go look for water or start to drink water. So then a stomach tube can be used. Uh, it can be either placed into the body of the animal, either through the mouth or through the nose. And then it's hooked up to water and then the water is sucked into or through the tube and straight into the stomach of the animal. So the other type of poisoning would be urea poisoning. So here in the top corner, we actually have pictures of what the urea generally looks like when it's added to feed. So it's actually like urea pellets or little, yeah, it's, a, it's pellets. So then the first bullet there says urea licks or feed containing urea if they are not mixed correctly. So meaning if you do give feed to the animal and usually this urea is mixed with feed, if there's too much urea in the um, feed mix, then it could obviously cause the animal to get poisoned. So then secondly, your licks of feed containing urea are put out in the rain. Oh, this is very important. And I love asking this in the exam. So the urea then will dissolve in the water if it becomes wet and form highly concentrated mud puddles or water puddles. So basically why this is so um, bad it's apart from the salt in the previous slides. If it's just plain salt poisoning, your cure is water. But in the case of urea, water is not really the cure because outside what happens is um, as soon as the urea lick dissolves in the rain and this puddle forms, the water actually makes the urea much more concentrated. And then for some reason, animals are weird. They will come in instead of licking um, the urea lick or going to the urea lick, they decide they will drink the water which is right next to the urea. So they won't go to the actual fresh water source that's maybe a couple meters away. So then they're getting this concentrated mush into their bodies and then they get poisoned. So your main symptoms here is animals will also get bloated, so in large stomach. They become aggressive, so meaning the behavior will start to change. They will foam at the mouth, um, their breathing will increase, they will have tetany. If you guys remember, this is the painful muscle cramps basically, basically which is tetany. 
and in severe cases again they could die from urea poisoning so mainly your normal salt poisoning is not that severe you can try and change it with enough water hopefully in time but with your urea poisoning very quickly it can become very dangerous and the animal will die so many of treatment here is to again make sure the animal has clean drinking water mix the rations properly to ensure in the first place the animal doesn't get in too much urea in then the third one is actually also important dose the animal with one liter of vinegar with two liters of water so you dilute the vinegar a little bit but basically a vinegar water solution also with the stomach tube in severe cases this flushes out that, that poison out of the body and then lastly protect your rations and licks containing urea from rain so your urea licks must be placed somewhere i want to say underneath a tree but even a tree won't really help so underneath a shaded area with um yeah just a shaded area so that the water can't get to the lick in the first place so it's a good way to prevent this so i just want to mention this is not in your textbook but they do ask this sometimes in the exams uh, about bloat so as we can see in the corner here your a cow in this case has an enlarged stomach so it's basically uh, all these gases are accumulating on the inside and it is very uncomfortable for the animal so how to treat the bloat so there are three main things that, that farmers can do. The first thing is to use the stomach tube, like we saw in the, or talked about in the previous slides. Um, add some water, vinegar, whatever, try and get rid of all this um, gases on the inside. Secondly, using anti-foaming agents, also through a stomach tube. So this will also try and help that uh, gas to escape. And lastly, they mention a trocar and cannula. And again, this should be used as a last resort. So when the bloat is so severe that the other two options do not work, here is your trocar and cannula, um, maybe the other way around. So the one is, it kind of looks like a chisel. It's very, very sh a sharp edge here. And this is basically um, a small tube that is then used. So basically this first one, the trocar, is placed here, usually in this area of the body of the, of the in this case, a cow, to make basically a small um, opening, a small hole in oh, my mouse, a small hole here so that basically the skin gets penetrated and it, the aim is to go into the stomach of the animal so just to make a small hole and then you put the cannula inside this little tube and the tube then basically keeps the skin and stomach and everything open so that the gas that was on the inner side of the stomach can now escape through this tube out into the open out of into the air so this is basically to use a, a, a severe instrument to use to allow the gas inside the stomach to escape so again, this is in your um, severe cases and a, a lot that have a last resort option. Okay, so then lastly, what is the role of the state, the, our government, in animal protection? So the first four bullets shows what the government should be able to um, not really enforce, but the four main things that our country has to keep in mind. So animals must be farmed to reduce food losses. That's one thing that the government should be able to enforce, I want to say. So we all should be able to farm so that there's enough food for the country. I mean, it makes sense. That's the, the point of a farm. Secondly, to increase productivity in animal production. So meaning the farmer should produce as much of something as possible, meaning a lot of milk, a lot of meat, a lot of wool, whatever he is producing. Thirdly, to protect us, human health, against diseases that are transmissible from animals. So meaning try and prevent zoonotic diseases from spreading throughout the country. This is actually a very important one, and it makes sense. We don't want a pandemic again all through the country and falsely ensure that um, ensure humane treatment of animals meaning all animals must be treated with respect and yes there could be debate about whether they have a soul or not or whether animals can feel or not but the fact is just because we are breeding them and eventually killing them for food doesn't mean we shouldn't be able to treat them and kill them humanely then how does the government actually achieve this. This is our last um, bullets. So through legislation, through laws. So a couple of laws here they mention is like the Animal Health Act to make sure the animals are healthy, Animal Diseases Act, so again to make sure that the zoonotic diseases do not spread, and the Abattoir Hygiene Act, meaning the area where the animals are being handled should be sterilized and clean, also basically to prevent the spread of diseases and to make sure the animals are healthy. Secondly, quarantine services, meaning they have to in enforce quarantine if there is notifiable diseases anywhere. 
basically this is to prevent the spread of the diseases. Thirdly, like I just said, notifiable diseases, those that are very, very dangerous for animals and humans alike, and there are around 32 of these that have to be notified in our country. Then also state veterinarians and livestock inspectors have to be there, meaning livestock and farms should be inspected, and vets should be the ones actually to um, help treat farmers, help them to treat their animals. Then also there should be vaccines available, makes sense, so that we can prevent all these diseases in the first place. And lastly, the government can control the import and export of certain, well, of all livestock, also to prevent the spread of diseases and to ensure that animals are actually treated correctly and to ensure their health and also ours. And that is the end of the animal health module.